So welcome everybody. Uh, this is our, I don't know, probably fifth, sixth, sixth installment of uh, Ladies Who Lunch. So if you don't know me, um, Leanne Robin, I'm the author, this is my first book, The Hamptons and Long Island Homegrown Cookbook, and it tells the stories of the chefs and the growers that inspire them most, and that's kind of critical to who our guest, special guest is for this show. And um, this is my second book, is The Art of the Garnish, and so it talks more about garden to glass. It's mainly my um, original cocktail recipes along with recipes from uh, mixologists from around the country and around the world, as, long, as well as some companion uh, dishes that go with it. So uh, I'm inviting our guest, Nancy Addison. And uh, I first met her through my Academy Award winning um, cousin, Marianne DeLeo. And the two of them wrote this book, and um, it's called Alive and Cooking, and it was an easy guide to health for you and your parents, and uh, you can get this on Amazon. And I want to say, for everyone that buys a book, you have no idea how important it is to write a review. I was just telling a first-time author whose book will come out in the autumn um, uh, about this, like a new cocktail book. So maybe we'll have him on, you know, at some point. But I was privileged, I was very honored, I have to say, that they asked me to write the foreword for this book. So that's how um, I first met uh, with Nancy and uh, with Marianne. And so she's coming from Texas, that's why I put on this Lyle Lovett's music. So um, in the meantime, I wanted to share with you a little bit here that my uh, tablescape, it's not as exotic as some of them, but we had a big you know, 4th of July party, it was, you know, post-corona a little bit here with my immediate family, and we had our fireworks party, so we had all the um, inserts in the table, and so we seated like 10 or 12 around here, and I just wanted to point out how beautiful this tablescape uh, runner is. My cousin in Florida made it for me. She knows I love exotic birds, so if you can see the two of the, um, the oh, <laughs> let me see if I can find, I see Nancy is here. Hi, Nancy. Hopefully we can come together here. But I was just showing off some things that my cousin did, you know, here. Let me see if we can go. We got one, we got two. And I think we're in. Thank you for your patience, everybody. So, um, you know, technology is not the boss of us. and um, But sometimes it predominates, right? So, hi, Nancy. Nancy's coming us from a new village that she just moved to in Texas, and um, uh, I was just showing off my your book, the uh, Alive and Cooking book that I wrote the um, forward for. So I thought today we might flip things a little bit, and um, first I was saying I have the Lyle Lovett music on, you know, I said maybe I've got to up my game about Texas musicians, but I do love his music, so it's playing background. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> Hi, I'm just doing fantastic and just thrilled to be joining you today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, and how hot is it in Texas? It is July and tomorrow's August. So we are up in the 90s and probably going into the hundreds soon. Oh gosh, we just had a big storm last night here in the New York metropolitan area. So we're right on the water. So there is a little bit of a cooling effect. We ferried back last night before the tornadoes, which we never had before. So thank you, climate chaos. But uh, Nancy told me, you know, my little ladies who lunch fork. So she got it yesterday. So I want to be able to cheers to you. Oh, good. She got it. I was so happy. It's like, hello, ladies. <laughs> Right. I'm drinking a little bit of champagne. Are you imbibing in anything? You know what? Um, I got up while ago. Let me grab it. Okay, you'll do that. I'm going to put up the picture of your book. I don't know what this is going to do to the technology, but I'll see what we can do. And we put it over. So let's see if we can get you back. But... Um, when she comes back. But this is Nancy's latest book. It's called For the Love of Willie. It's like so cute. So the two of them here. So, but you can you can hold up the book because you said you have it there. So it's probably better if you hold the book up, right? Yeah. 
This is so adorable. And I have a picture I'm going to put up when I post the story on the Garden Glamour blog. But um, it's, it's about a squirrel, you know. And I thought, this is, like, so perfect. Uh, Bill's sister, uh, Bonnie, she loves squirrels. She's even, like, when they get hurt, she takes them to the vet and puts little... Uh, casts on them and she really takes care of them so for me they jump in and out of the garden beds and sometimes they're hysterical and sometimes a nuisance but everyone has a feeling about squirrels so tell tell us how this book came about I was living in Costa Rica and I'm a certified international wildlife rehabilitator and I have a deep love for all creatures and I was taking care of two dogs. I was living on top of a mountain. It was absolutely divine. And one of the dogs, I was looked out the window and he was playing with something. And, and I realized it was a living creature that he was playing with. And I dashed out there quite quickly and chased him away. And the little squirrel, I couldn't exactly what it was. They look different down there. They're a different color. And yeah, uh, he crawled off and just collapsed in the gut. Oh, geez. What color are you? And I, they're kind of an orange color. Oh. Uh, they, they blend in really well with the rainforest. And, uh, and apparently there are quite a few different species of squirrels down there and this was just one particular type but i i i fell in love rehabbing this squirrel he i didn't think he was going to make it at first but uh, when he pulled through he really had quite a, quite a great personality and he would ride around on my shoulder oh my and goodness. when it got cold and rainy <laughs> it, when it got cold and rainy, he would he he liked to ride around in my pocket where you he could stay worried, warm. You weren't worried about getting bit or anything, Bill. Can you see everything? Okay, okay. Bill was just signaling to me. I didn't know what he was saying, but you didn't worry about getting bit or anything. You know, it's interesting having rehabbed. I I don't know, well over a thousand animals in my life. Wow. Um, I rarely ever got bitten by by anything. Uh, animals read the pictures in your mind, and they can read your energy. They're very, very sensitive. Yeah. And so they know when you're coming to help them or harm them. Mm -hmm. And frequently, I'll grab a wild animal, well, carefully, <laughs> <laughs> usually holding something like a towel or with some kind of animal uh, handling gloves on, depending on what kind of animal it is. And frequently, as soon as you get them, they'll just take this deep breath and Aww. just totally relax in your arms. It's, it's really quite remarkable. And um, so how anyway, you, that's how, kind of been... How did you name him Willie? And then the premise of the book is how to deal with death of a of a pet is that correct or you know the loss of one i actually had to give up this squirrel to a wildlife rehabilitation sanctuary because i wasn't staying in costa rica much longer all uh, right I mean and so just separating yourself from an animal you know, giving them up for whatever reason it might be. And, you know, it could be having them pass over. It, it can be very traumatic. And uh, he got the name Willie because I know it's kind of silly, but I'm a member of an international English-speaking women's group down in uh, San Isidro, Costa Rica. And we had just eaten at a little restaurant named Willie's where oh. I had been the speaker that day. Oh my God. <laughs> that is like true karma. And I guess I have that name in my mind. <laughs> that is true karma. I love it. Well, of course, I think William's a beautiful name. My husband's name is William. And I know there's a lot of princes named William. So it's like so perfect. 
And I think kids will identify with it. So for everyone that's viewing, you know, I ordered the book, but I haven't gotten the book yet. So that's why I'm, I know it's an activity book, but what's, what's the activity if you can describe that? Well, I have an art degree and I used to be a school teacher and I have a lifelong certification in Texas for grades one through 12 for art. And so I, I made the book so that I took my photographs and, and had an artist friend of mine techn technologically change it into black and white pictures that can be colored by children. So coloring can actually be therapeutic. And so in this book, I have activities and thoughts and things that they can do in order to, to handle or move through the sadness that they might be experiencing through losing a little pet. I see. I see. And they can, they have some pages at the back where they can draw pictures of their pet and the things that they did that was wonderful for them and kind of make a memorial for this this pet that they loved so much and i think it helps bring some closure and also do it being a a health and nutrition uh, lifestyle type of person i realized that any kind of grief or trauma can cause illness in the body mm. and so handling this in a very positive way is so important and they need to work through it and feel it, yes. but also find a way to resolve it and move move forward. And so I, it's um, that's kind of my thoughts on that. I see. I mean, you're so uh, you're such a, you're such a polymath. I have to say, like you're so talented in so many different ways. But I love how you bring the coloring in. I mean, uh, uh, you know, in recent years, coloring books have become so. Uh, popular even with adults because it's a way to de-stress and you know express themselves. No. It's 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 I've actually had to tell my that they bought, bought it, they bought it this out and so that they actually went to the music event. And I've been in a therapy for myself because I really miss hearing that squirrel there's some weird, like, um, noise going on. The squirrel is talking. I don't know what's going on, but I hear that. Okay, I'm not going to talk for a little bit. I'm just going to say, I don't know. I don't know. All right. I'm going to um, this How do you know? We're just trying to see where the noise is coming from. See. So Nancy, tell us just a little bit more about your other book so we can see if it's us that's causing this audio. Okay. Um, well, I've I've written a few other books. This one is probably my, my best well-known one, and it's uh, indexed and used by quite a few medical doctors as their nutritional resource, and it's now in its sec second edition, and it's won eight awards. And all my books are half cookbook. And uh, Diabetes in Your Diet is another one that is quite popular. And then I know a lot of people are really challenged these days with weight loss because they've been sitting at home eating comfort food. So my lose weight, get healthy, and never be on a diet again <laughs> is very popular. And then my Raising Healthy Children's book, which I'm afraid I left it over there. Um, <laughs> but Raising Healthy Children is another popular book that uh, quite a few people enjoy. And so, uh, and then of course the Alive and Cooking book that I wrote with your cousin Mary Ann. Hey. <laughs> so tell us it's how, really, do you, uh, just a, a, how do you get inspired to write your cookbooks and your books? Like what's the thought process? And if, you know, the viewers there say, I have an idea for a book, but I could never write a book. What do you say to them? I think 
everybody has the ability. I think part of it is I, I never thought I would actually be writing books, <laughs> but really? I was counseling people. <laughs> I was counseling people and also teaching healthy cooking to people. And everyone was like, well, why don't you put this in a book? Why can't, because then I can take it home and I can have it to reference. And I was in Greece studying Mediterranean cooking from this lady who had written four books. And as she's teaching this using unhealthy ingredients, in my opinion, uh, <laughs> I, I was talking with my roommate later and I was like, you know, I'm going to write a book about all of this because you know, I know how to do this, but using healthier ingredients. And at the time, my children were in college. And I said, you know, I think I'll start with a how-to book for college students on how to eat healthy and not gain those 10 or 20 pounds that they usually gain the first year of college. The freshman 15, and right? she looked at <laughs> And because they were always calling me and asking me, you know, what do they buy for their kitchen? And what kind of food do they do this with? And their friend wants to eat like them. And so how, what do they tell them? And, you know, all these types of things. Because I raised my children on a healthy, organic, mostly plant-based diet. And so, you know, they, they knew a lot of this. And they were super healthy and they gained all that weight. And in fact, my book, Raising Healthy Children, is quite literally the story of me raising my children. I love that. And uh, they even have a few recipes they contributed to that. Oh, but uh, my roommate said, Nancy, you know just about everything about plant-based eating, about being a vegetarian. She said, write about what you know. And I thought, you know, that she, you're absolutely right. And so... Um, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, I want to write a book or I, I have to write this book. I want to write a book, but I don't, I haven't. And what I found was I just locked myself away from answering the phone, looking at my computer, answering emails, doing anything. And I just started writing and I just started writing, you know, just stream of thought. And then I just went back and edited it. And I think that's really what it takes is really that focus and that concentration because even just answering the phone, it takes you sometimes 15, 30, an hour to get back into that, that frame of mind that you had. And sometimes you can't even do that. But I would do that for three or four, sometimes five days at a time. And I found that that worked best for me. And, um, and it took me five years to write that first book. And it took Marianne and I five years to write that second book. And we actually used that program when we were working together. We would just not do anything else for like five or six hours a day. And we would just work. And um, I think it just takes really focus and, and just taking the time to just write, write, write. And then you can take the time to go back and edit. I totally so that. that's kind of my that is really my good story. advice, Nancy. As a writer myself, you know, I'm also as a garden designer and a horticulturist and a content writer. You know, you get pulled into you know it's a service business, so you get you have to get pulled into that, and it takes you away, you know, and so you don't have it. So what I hear you saying is that you need to almost lock yourself away and be able to just focus then on what you're writing. You know, it's just. Well, I think that is like really important. But what about people that might say, um, you know, I think mothers are, you know, probably pretty good nutritionists overall, you know, but maybe they've been doing a lot of cooking, baking, whatever, gardening during the coronavirus, you know, lockdown time. And they think, you know, I'd like to switch careers. I'd like to do this. What advice would you give them? I would say pick a subject that you love with all your heart and something that you know, feel you know really well, that you love sharing with others. You know, maybe you like sharing it with your family or your sister or your best friend, you know, your tips or your, your ideas. And then 
you know, try to come up with the right title. I think that helps. Definitely. And then just start writing. Just start writing. I think that's where people really fall short is they don't actually start writing. Yeah. They yeah. think about it and they think about it, but they never really put it down. And yeah. I think doing an outline might help. You know, what what do you what do you want to and it doesn't have to be a long book. It can be a very short book. I mean, like I even wrote this book, you know, when, when I was working with Larry Hagman, the actor, he had to be too fat because he had throat cancer. So I even wrote this teeny tiny little book of a feeding tube recipe book. Oh, that's You know, you, it doesn't have to be huge. It can be small. You can set up a free account on Amazon uh, or some of these other author pages and, and, Actually, it's print on demand, so you don't have to, you know, have a publisher. I actually created my own publishing company because the literary agents and the publishers that were looking at my books and wanted to publish them, they wanted to take out whole chapters, and I wanted to keep the integrity of my information, and I wanted to keep control of that, so I just started my own publishing company. You know, you can do anything if you set your mind to it. And it's a lot easier than people think it is. So, but that's very <laughs> A lot of people are, especially when they're intimidated, they're like, who would want to know from little old me, you know, kind of a thing. But here I'm going to, I started when we were waiting for you, but I just want to tell the show those who are listening to go to Amazon or Barnes and Noble, but, and you can go to, you know, I'm going to put up at the end all of Nancy's uh, social media, but you know, she's the number one best-selling author of Diabetes and Your Diet. She showed you raising her healthy children, how to be a healthy vegetarian, lose weight, get healthy, and never have to be on a diet again. Tube feeding recipe for optimum health. You know, alive and cooking. We talked about. You know, but she also has a podcast. So tell us a little bit about that, because people can sign up and subscribe to that. I love it. Thank you. I. I never in a million years thought I would have my own radio show, but this radio station owner in Florida just kept after me for years until I finally gave in. And now I'm going on my sixth year, and I have about 57,000 downloads a month in over 58 countries. And I love hearing from the people around the world. I have a group following me in Saudi Arabia. I have a, a whole village listening to me in England. <laughs> it's just, it's a, you know, a mother in New Zealand listens to me every single night while she cooks dinner. And it's just, it makes my heart feel so warm. And I just speak on various topics I think are pertinent for the day. And my show is called Organic Healthy Lifestyle. And the podcasts are uploaded to iHeartRadio. Okay. which is where most people find me and can download those shows. And they can go back and get any of the shows once they sign up, right? Yes. they. Uh, you can go back to the very first show I did from Nicaragua. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're a girl after my own heart. You know, I love Costa Rica, as you know, and Nicaragua we've been to, and Bill and I really enjoyed that there. But I love just how you embrace, so I even wore this, you know, outfit, because for you it's got like um, animals on it, if you could see, but I wore this, it's got birds and different things, and then I could wear my sapphires, which I love also, which is great, but, you know, you're such a, you know, totally down to earth, but like I said before, such a polymath, it's like you keep learning and educating and then teaching others and so what do you see for the future going forward? Like, What will you embrace or what will you look to do? Right. It's so important. And I feel like I learn something new every day. And I love searching for the truth. And I think, you know, with the crazy world we've been living in this last year, I feel like I've kind of been in the twilight zone like everybody else. And so I continue to search for ways for people to stay healthy, 
to deal with anxiety or stress, yes. to really live their best, best lives they can. And so I've just moved to the country in Texas and uh, rented, <laughs> rented this old uh, farmhouse that a friend put on her property that was built in 1907. And yeah. I've been really enjoying putting out water features for the birds and starting my organic vegetable garden and and meeting the people here. I just got my first library card and I'm going to read this book to the children's group. What do you mean your first and, library card? The first <laughs> library card ever or your first library card there? No, no, no. Here, here in this town. Okay, okay. You know, a lot of people, <laughs> my mother was on the library board in her town, and people forget how important libraries are to democracy and for access to books. You know, we live in an Amazon world where it's like, I mean, I like it too, but, you know, libraries are terrific, and it's a great way to have community and bring people together. I could not agree more. And I absolutely love libraries. And I remember at the Christmas festival when in New York, New York City, where they featured Marianne and my book and we got to give a workshop. Uh, it was so wonderful. And I think it does bring communities together. And the one here has activities and different types of things. And I think everyone, wherever you are in the world, you know, find that local spot like that where you do have access to books and to community things and people and i think that's one of the most important things we can do today is stay connected with our neighbors in our community and our family and try to be that loving loving peace there and positive helpful person and uh, and I think that is, is where I'm going at this time in my life, trying, trying to do that. Well, you're not only a beautiful person, like in your, you know, the way that you look, obviously, and you're just an elegant, friendly, wonderful person. And I was saying to Nancy the day, we've had some papers, you know, we've been downtown in Chinatown reviewing some restaurants together and that was like the last place that Bill and I went before coronavirus I was trying to support the Chinatown community but you your love of the environment and just helping others you've everybody has conflict or demons in their life and you've overcome so much and yet you continue to learn and teach all of us and I think that's an inspiring lesson for everyone especially women but um, I think for everybody to say you can live a dream. You know, it takes work. I'm, I'm sure every day is work. But, you know, to be able to see the beauty in life and what it can teach us and what we can contribute is just incredible. So I applaud you so much for that. And I thank you, you know, for coming on this, you know, Ladies to Lunch Conversations, because it is all about, you know, sharing you know, I always say when we're a little isolated, you know, the Corona thing, we'll see what happens after some time. But, you know, ideas have agency. And when people are not together, you know, they they really need to share, whether it's online or whether, like we're saying, please go, to, you know, with safety, go to your local libraries, whatever, but help each other, help help one another. You know, I just think that's critically important. Sorry, Eric Rapar is like sending a text message here. So, um but before we go, I have a couple of things, so I want to be able to ask sort of in a lightning round. Do you have a favorite book? I do. I think my favorite book I ever read was The Secret Life of Plants. Oh, very nice. Do you have a favorite of your books that you've written? Wait, why didn't you pick my book? <laughs> Sorry, I had to. I apologize. I couldn't resist that. <laughs> I love your book. <laughs> I love your books. Um, what What's the favorite? The of Secret them? Life of Plants is all scientific, and I, I think it just changed the way I looked at the world. 
Well, I always, you know, plan end of life in general. One of the uh, previous uh, ladies who lunch conversation guests, Jordan, she's written about, you know, plants, you know, will save us. It's the same, you know, flowers will bloom again, I think is the name of it, you know, because plants do save us. When I, was at, when I worked at Brooklyn Botanic Garden, our president at the time, you know, he used to joke, but with sincerity and say, you know, the, in, the, you know, the real last ice age, the animals didn't make it, but the plants did. And so the plants have a have a way of saving us, which I think is you know something to think about. But do you have a favorite of your own books? You know, I think my "How to Be a Healthy Vegetarian" book is maybe my favorite because I've researched it for so long. Mm -hmm. But I, I love my "Raising Healthy Children's" book because it's the story of of my children who I absolutely adore and how we handled different things throughout their childhood and going into adulthood. And, and my children, I gave it to them before I published it. And I said, okay, y'all, here's your chance to tell me if you want me to re remove anything. Cause I had in there all kinds of things like pens and different things. And both of them, reviewed it really well because I they they sent me back little bitty grammatical errors or little bitty misspellings that uh, my editor hadn't caught and uh, oh. so I knew they had really read it with a fine tooth comb but they both just said mom this is the story of our lives and I said I, I know and they neither one of them asked me to remove anything from it and it really meant a lot to me and uh, and it meant a lot to them as well. And they both contributed recipes to that because, uh, like I said, all my books, except the Willie book, uh, are half recipes. I, I love and, um, I feel so that. It, it, I or, love that. You know, it's like a, they call it like a food war, like a memoir, but it's about food. But the fact that I think people can relate to that. So, you know, when I do the blog, you know, uh, follow up on all this and I'll write, I'll put all the links to all of your books that, you know, I hope those who, you know, watch will be able to see and say, I, I want to get that book so that they can, they can really relate to it. So then I'm going to ask from a Texas music standpoint, I have Lyle Lovett playing, but do you have any uh, favorite musicians from Texas that you want to turn us on to? Well, I do. Um, I don't know if I really have any any new ones. I, I love Katie Musgrave. She's she, um, is that right? I don't know if I got that name right. Um, <laughs> she sings a song called Biscuits. I think I got the. I think her last name is, is Musgraves. Um, but she's from from Golden, Texas, and she's just great. And then uh, I love John Inman, who's just a musician in Austin. And I have to admit, I have a real fondness for Willie Nelson and his music because when I was working with Larry Hagman, Larry played Willie Nelson every night with, with our dinner. And I just, it always brings back all those fond memories. I love that. I love Willie Nelson too. I love his whole style of it. And there brings us back to Willie. So the book is... Uh, tell us again. I'm going to put the picture up. And oh. For the love of Willie. So that's going to be, you can look at, you know, Nancy's got so many points of contact here, but for the love of Willie, so you can see here, she's got her, I'm going to put up all, you can follow her on Instagram too, which is great. And then on Facebook. But, um, you know, all of your contact points, but you're very, such a giving person. And I'm so um, thankful that you took the time and work with me through the technology and whatever. We thank Bill, you know, for doing all this also and helping us with the camera and all. But uh, cheers to you and success with For the Love of Willie. It's an adorable, adorable book. So we'll encourage everybody to, it's a perfect gift for everyone, right? For kids, for adults, for anybody. Thank you, and thank you. Yes, I would think it would be good for anyone who loves animals 
uh, I think it could, might even be able to help people who are children who've just lost even, you know, a loved family member because it, it helps you, helps you work through the, the trauma of missing someone who's been in your life. And, um, I think, you know, when, uh, you know, I have relatives, my, my father, you know, you know, separate from my sister and her kids, but they, when you grow up on a farm and you see life and death in a different way, and I think a lot of us are so very isolated from any kind of death. It's just with Corona and things war, like when death has such a profound impact on us, that is trauma. It's not like the everyday thing. And so we need a way to be able to help us cope. And I think how you presented this and outlined it, I think is such a healthy way. And of course, that's just fitting with your whole brand and lifestyle, you know, to help us find a healthier way. So cheers to you. Thank you. It's been an honor to be here with you, Leanne. Thank you. All right. We'll talk later. Bye-bye. <laughs>